Oxford University, the oldest university in the English-speaking world and the second oldest university in the world. Since the first homework was assigned back in 1096, the Oxford University graduates have shaped the world. Albert Einstein, J.R.R. Tolkien, Indira Gandhi, Stephen Hawking, Imran Khan, Anna Winter, Robert Mugabe, Empress Masako of Japan, and so many others. Even today, in 2023, the university is still ranked number one in the world in the Times Higher Education. But most importantly, Harry Potter was filmed in several locations across Oxford. So basically, welcome to Hogwarts. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Sheen. I am an Oxford and Cambridge graduate and usually on this channel we explore strategies for personal and professional development. But today I want to share with you my story of getting into Oxford University as an international student from Mauritius. Okay, so story time. Let's picture little young Sheen living her best life on an island in Mauritius. I began thinking about applying to Oxford quite early on, especially right after my O-levels or GCSEs, whatever you call it, depending on where you're from. My sister was already in the UK studying, so it was the obvious choice that I was going to go to the UK for my studies as well. But Oxford was such a faraway dream. No one from my school had ever gone to Oxford. Across the whole island, maybe 10 people have gone to Oxford in the whole history of our existence. So you can tell how it was something that was very, very hard to reach and not something that automatically came to me. And that might be surprising for for many of you but I went to a state school and in that school there's no semblance of career guidance there are no tips for university applications mostly because we're limited in the sense that the teachers themselves don't know how this whole thing works and it's just something that does not exist so whoever goes to university in Mauritius they either have help at home and family members who can help them or they will go to paid places where they can advise you like agents but there were very very few of those and you didn't really know how they worked or whether they worked actually so I guess here I would say is takeaway number one from my story is that even then I managed to make it into Oxford and later on Cambridge so don't let your background or your current situation hold you back from trying and applying to Oxford. Back to my story my dad took me to the British Council in Mauritius because there they had loads of brochures and you had people that you could ask questions about university in general and they had kind of an open day so we went there to try and see what's out there what could I apply for because that's exactly how my sister did it and then that was the first time that someone after looking at my results and at my general CV suggested that I do have a chance with Oxford and I should consider applying and how Oxford has an earlier deadline which is 15th of October as opposed to the other universities were a bit later on and they said that if I wanted to apply I should start looking into it now. So that was the first time Oxford became kind of a reality to me and at that time I was about 16 and I thought oh sounds a bit far-fetched but there is no harm in trying especially given that on the UCAS form that you send to apply to the UK you have five choices that you can put and I thought okay it's one out of five choices doesn't matter it's worth the risk but now the main thing is you need to know what you're going to study right and my whole life I wanted to be a doctor so I thought I wanted to do medicine but when it came to this time of making a decision of what I wanted to apply to I started realizing that I don't really like biology <laughs> at all. I started also shadowing doctors in the local hospitals and speaking to my family friends who were doctors and also just trying to gauge what the ecosystem was like and everybody and when I say everybody I mean 100% everyone told me don't go to do medicine and that was because of the state of employment for doctors in the country and also just the fact that it was very saturated and they thought that it was just too boring and I should try and do something a bit more interesting and after doing this shadowing and internship whatever you call them in the hospital I did realize that you know what I don't think this is something that I want to do and at that time I started really enjoying doing physics and chemistry and I heard about the pure sciences that you can study at university so I thought okay let me look into it just to give you context you know science was very new to my family and myself no one in my family has formal education in sciences because my sister did economics and then she's an actuary now so very different path so we were trying to explore the pure sciences and then I remember one of my teachers told me to go on to Oxford University and just go on to the subject list and just see what's out there and see if something calls out to you and that's how I came across material science and I thought okay it actually is emerging physics chemistry engineering and it just showed the different applications that can come from having a degree in material science 
science, it could be construction, it can be healthcare, it can be mining, it can be aerospace, microbiology. So it literally goes into everything. So I thought it would be a very good base to have so that later on it will give me a lot more space in terms of building and deciding where I want to specialize in. So that's how material science came across. So this is my second takeaway actually, that it is absolutely fine to keep changing your mind about what you want to pursue at university because you have to do three years of this and especially if you're applying to Oxford or Cambridge. I think it is very important because it is quite tough when you're there. The terms are a lot shorter, there's so much going on, there's a lot of pressure. So if you don't have a genuine passion for what you're doing, it is very hard to keep going. So that's why take your time and that's why I say start early. So I started early and it gave me so much time to try and test and see what subject really, really spoke to me and came out as the final subject I wanted to apply to. And that's how we came to material science. Now that we knew what subject I wanted to do, it was time to start exploring a little bit more what material science meant. It was a very new term. No one I knew in Mauritius had ever heard of this degree before. So it became a challenge for me to try and explain what the subject was. And this was very key because it kind of prepared me for my interview where you know exactly what the subject means. Because even when my parents would ask me, what does that mean? What are the application? What kind of jobs can you get? It forced me to dig a little bit deeper into the modules, even looking at what different universities were offering in terms of material science. What does that mean? And I really deepened my understanding of what the subject meant. And then I started doing some extra reading, started reading about mining, started reading about metals. It was just all really interesting at that time, as you can imagine. And then I went to the Mauritius Research Council, asked them if they're doing any kind of work relevant to this field, and they actually were. They were looking at plastic and they were looking at algae. They were looking into transforming this into a sustainable material. So all of this was very relevant and I started gaining some more information and watching what people do with this. So that really made me ready to answer any kind of questions that would come across in terms of the subject. So again, this is my third takeaway is that you need to start planning to apply to Oxford very early. Because I started two years in advance, it gave me enough time to get involved in super curricular activities, which means that it's not extracurricular where there are hobbies not related to your academic pathway, but super curricular activities means that they're still not what you're learning at school, but they're still relevant to the career that you're choosing, to the course that you're choosing in terms of learning. So that's why interning at the Mauritius Research Council or reading different books that are not in my curriculum, but I'm learning about the materials meant that I could show this first of all in my application and secondly, making me ready to answer questions. Then the next step was to fill in the UCAS application form online and send it off. And when you apply, it's just basic questions about yourself, etc., etc. The most important part being the personal statement and your references. And you get five choices, as I mentioned. I think I applied to Oxford, Imperial, Sheffield, UCL, and King's, I think. And then I got my acceptance offers from the four others because they don't interview. It's only based on your predicted grades and your personal statement. And then the fifth one was Oxford, which had an interview stage. So now I was waiting for whether I will get the invite to the interview or not. And then one fine morning, I did get my interview invitation, which was incredible. I still remember the day that I got my little email telling me that there is a status change on my UCAS application. So I went there to check and it had the invitation for the interview. Interview. And at this point, if you ever make it there, it is a great point to celebrate because even let's say if you don't get the offer at a later stage, but getting the invitation itself is a very big feat because I think 50% of the applicants actually get the interview. So you've already left behind a lot of people at this point. So it is something to celebrate and to be proud of. So, you know, little island girl over here didn't even know that Oxford had a college system and what that meant. So in the forum, when I had to choose a college, I didn't. I said I'll do an open application because I didn't know what's the difference between the different colleges. And I got pulled into Corpus Christi College. And and this was probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. But at that point, I did not know that. So I was going to be interviewed at Corpus Christi, but you're also interviewed at a second college, just in case the first college doesn't want you, a second college might want you. And my second one was Mansfield. So at this point, I decided that I wanted to go in person to do my interview. So this was going to be my first ever time outside of my island. First time in the UK, first time in Oxford, everything was happening at the same time. For me, it was super exciting right because I thought you know what whether I get in or not at least this is my chance to go and have a little walk around Hogwarts I mean Oxford <laughs> 
Now, when it came to my preparation for the interview, I had, I think, about a month. I took out my personal statement again and I made sure to highlight everything that I had mentioned in terms of extracurricular, supercurricular, and go through these again, whether they were books that I said I've read, papers I said I read, and prepare my answers about all the internships, the shadowing, all of that, making sure that I can openly discuss these things if I were asked to. And then I reread a bit about the very scientific things that I had learned at school in terms of physics and chemistry. And then I went online, Googled a lot of things about what are the usual questions they ask for in interviews, especially in material science, and tried to get as much prep done as possible. But the one good thing is that in the invitation letter that you get, they are very clear that this is a very friendly chat. And the point of the interview is that the tutors who are interviewing you would eventually be your teachers. So they are trying to see if you're teachable and if you're someone that they can get along and they can teach you something and you will enjoy the process, they will enjoy the process. So it's just about assessing if we're a good fit for each other for teaching purposes. So I guess this is takeaway number four. Make sure you prepare very well for your interview. Do not take it lightly. Do not just assume that you know everything. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Okay, so now it is December. My sister and I fly to the UK. First time in London. It is snowing. My first time seeing the snow. First time being that cold. And I was just loving it. It is a little bit overwhelming because there are so many first time experiences happening at the same time, but it was incredible. I was in love with the country, in love with everything. Now, we made it to the interview. So we took a train to Oxford on the day of my interview. I'm wearing my sister's coat. It's my first time wearing boots. It's my first time wearing a suit. It just doesn't feel real at this point. And on the train, I thought, you know what? Let me reread through my notes, etc., etc. And my sister, I remember telling me, dude, don't do that. <laughs> she was like, you are going to be more stressed out if you stop preparing now. Just enjoy the scenery. It's really pretty outside. You've never been on a train before. Just watch what's happening outside. Be chilled so that when you get there, you feel a little bit more confident and you're not panicking in your head about whether you know everything or not. Just relax. You've done your prep now. Just go there. We made it to Corpus Christi. Beautiful city. Oxford is so beautiful objectively. And when I got there, I could not believe that I was there. I could not believe my eyes, what I could see. It was just an incredible experience. But at the same time, I was very self-conscious because I was not used to speaking in English at all. And now I was very conscious about the fact that I have to speak English to people and everyone else is very fluent. They are mostly English people there. So that became a little bit of a thing that I felt and I started feeling very self-conscious. And I was taken into this waiting room where everyone else was waiting to be called for the interviews for different subjects in the college. And I kid you not, the whole room was white and I was probably the only non-white person and also probably the only international person there. And it was a weird feeling, you know, walking in. I had never been in that kind of environment. Again, my little Mauritian ears can just hear how fluently everybody is speaking. And in that moment, I did question whether I would belong in that place and whether I would make it. <laughs> and I started a little bit stressing out, especially because everyone already knew the place. They are from the country. A lot of them had been there for open days before. They were sharing with everybody what they had done when they were here previously, or some of them were there from the night before and they knew the college a little bit. So I started feeling a little bit overwhelmed. And then I met Chris, who later on became my college dad. So we have a family system in Oxford. It's like a mentoring for people who are older than you in your college doing your same subject. And Chris was so nice. He probably noticed that I was getting a little bit stressed out. And he walked me to my interview and he said, listen, it is absolutely chilled. They are very friendly. They will not try to catch you out. They are just there to have a chat. So just be yourself, forget everything else. You made it this far for a reason. So just believe in that and just go in and do your best. I still remember that chat we had, especially when we we're going up the stairs. And that made a huge impact for me because that was the chat just before I entered the room for my interview. And at that point I thought, it's okay. We made it this far, we've got this. Let's just see what happens. I remember that room so well, especially because obviously for the years to come, I then had teaching in that room and walking it, it was so cold. The heating was not working. And I remember they told me, don't take your coat off because we know you come from a very warm place. This place is really cold right now. So just keep your coat on and we'll just have a chat. And we had a really nice chat. They started asking me about Mauritius, about my flight here. And I was completely diffused at this point. I was not stressed out anymore. I stopped focusing on the fact that I was speaking English 
English and I just got into the conversation. And funny enough, four years later at my graduation dinner, my tutor who was in that room that day still remembered that it was cold and he told me not to take my coat off and how I looked like this little island girl who was freezing in her coat. It's incredible that they remember these things, but this just goes to show that this is a really unique and real interaction that you're having in that moment. It was actually such a pleasant chat. It was very friendly. We talked about my personal statement. They pointed out a few things that they wanted to ask questions about. They asked me general physics questions, a maths problem, and then I was also given a very material specific task. And at this point, I realized that a lot of what was happening was they would ask me an initial problem, I would offer a solution, and then we kept going back and forth. They would keep asking me questions, and then they would give me different kinds of prompts that would push me in different directions. And I thought, oh, I needed so much help. That was probably not a great shout, right? And probably they wanted someone who could have just come up with the answer. But that's where I was wrong, because what they are testing is they're testing if you're teachable. They are giving you a problem that is impossible for you to solve at the level that you're at. So what they want to see is how how do you tackle the problem and how do you use help and prompts that they're giving you to actually make it to the answer so that's what they were testing and I guess that's what I managed to do very well because in my head I thought they just wanted the answer but no they want to see your thinking process and they want to see how you work with prompts and help the time went by really fast and I was done before I knew it and then after this I had to go to Mansfield for my second interview and it was the same process again somebody escorted me there and then once I was there the college that is even more beautiful and on the walk I could just see everything and I kept thinking I love this place and then when I got there I did the second interview it was the same thing same format very friendly a lot of materials -y questions with prompts and even with props and everything and it was interesting chat I actually enjoyed the conversation and I guess that's takeaway number five to just remember to be yourself because what they're trying to see is who you are because at this point you've proven yourself that you have the grades that you're smart enough to be there so they just want to see your personality shine through and see whether you're a good fit for them as a teacher and then somebody walked me back to see my sister before we took the train back to Oxford and I remember on that walk to my sister I kept taking everything in thinking I probably did not make it because I don't feel like it went super super well but I am here right now so let me just take it all in I made it here I did my interview now we'll go home and whatever happens happens but I was just very happy to have been to that point and I thought if it doesn't happen I'll be sad but at least I have this <laughs> obviously looking back now you feel like it's a silly thought but in that moment that's how it felt then we left for Mauritius, my sister and I. We got stuck at the airport. There was a snowstorm. We slept in the terminal for two nights. And then we finally made it out and went back home. And on the 2nd of January, I remember waking up to check my email. And when I did it, I saw that I had been accepted in Oxford University. I was one of the 27 students selected across the whole university for that cohort of material science. And that is a feeling that I cannot forget and till now it is so fresh and it was one of the best days of my life. I'm hoping that by sharing my story I am telling you that it is not impossible. It takes a lot of hard work but do not let your current situation or your background hold you back. Yes it might be a little bit harder for us to make it there, it might take a little bit more work but doesn't mean it's impossible. Now on YouTube you have access to so many people who are at Oxford and you have so much help in terms of application available, so many people that are accessible to you that you can reach out and ask for advice. So just do the work and if you really want to get there, I'm telling you, if you do the work and you have the grades, there is nothing stopping you. I hope this was helpful and tune in next time for me to tell you my story about how I got into Cambridge University. Until then, take care. Bye bye.